Today's lesson is topic 4.2, using mental math to subtract. The objective today is that you will be able to apply a variety of methods to subtract whole numbers mentally. This will be pretty similar to our previous lesson, which was using mental math to add, but today we're gonna focus on subtracting numbers. Don't forget to include your title in your notes. Today, our problem is, Robin has 260 centimeters of wire. To hand make a bird feeder, she needs to cut 17 centimeters from the wire. Find out how much wire she will have left by using mental math. Again, we're not going to do all of this in our head. We are going to work on writing out our mental math strategies on paper so that later on, as we get better at this, we will be able to do all of this in our head. So today, if we have 260 centimeters of wire and we're cutting 17 from it, our subtraction problem would be 216 I'm sorry, 260 minus 17. Go ahead and include this in your notes. Compensation is a strategy that we will use for both adding and subtracting. At first, it can seem complicated, so stick with me. So again, we are going to be subtracting 260 minus 17. Instead of 17, I like to work with the numbers that are multiples of 10 because I love that zero at the end. It's easier to work with. Okay, I have to pay close attention to how much I am doing right here. So I went from 17 to 20. So I am going to be subtracting more than I need. That's really important this time is to pay attention to the operation. So 260 minus 17. Well, I'm going to do 260 minus 20. So I can do that a little bit quicker than 17. But I have to pay attention to the fact that I have now subtracted more than I need to subtract. So if I subtract too many, I have to make sure I add them back in at the end of my problem. So this time I subtracted three too many, so I will add in three more at the end of my problem. Here's another example. Write this one in your notes as well. Again, feel free to pause the video at any point if you need to catch up on what you're writing in your notes. Be sure that your notes are neat and organized. 609 minus 298 this problem, you will see that we will be messing with the numbers on both sides. Okay, we will come up with easier numbers to subtract, both with our first number and our second number. 609, we know, is pretty close to 600. So I'm writing down 600 minus 300, because 298, if I rounded to the nearest 100, would be 300. I always like to keep track of how much more I'm subtracting every single time. So in this one... On the left-hand side, I'm starting with nine less than I need to. And on the right-hand side, I'm gonna subtract two too many. So as I go back into my problem and I do 600 minus 300, I have to be sure to add those numbers back in at the very end. So if you remember, we started with 609. Well, 600 is nine less than what I really need. But with this problem, it's already a subtraction problem, so I have to make sure I add my numbers back in at the end. So 300 plus 9 plus 2. And that would give me 311. Try using compensation to subtract mentally, but in your journals. I want to see you break down both of these problems. I'll start the first one with you. So you'll write down number 1 in your notes, and we will do 400 minus 227. Well, when I look at 227, it's pretty close to 200. But this time, I am subtracting 27 less than I need to. So, when I do 400 minus 200, I end up with 200. But I didn't subtract enough this time, because I did only 200 and I still need to subtract out 27. So what you have to pay attention to right here, because this problem, I didn't subtract more than I need to, I didn't subtract enough. So I still have 27 to subtract down here. So I'm gonna subtract out 20, which will give me 180, and then I'm gonna subtract out my last seven. So 100, and 80 minus 7. Again, you should be doing this in your notes. Write your answer in your notes and box it in so I can see your answer when you bring your notes back to class. 
On number two, we will do 500 minus 100. So this time, you're going to subtract more than you need, so we'll have to make sure to add it back in the end. Go ahead and solve and box your answer in so I can see when you bring your notes back to class. Again, feel free to pause to make sure you get all of these written down. The other method that we will be talking about today is counting on. Counting on tends to be a favorite for a lot of students. So for counting on, we'll look at this problem. Again, make sure you're writing this down in your notes. 400 minus 172. So when I do counting on, I start with whatever number I'm subtracting. So in this case, I start with 172. 172 is being subtracted from 400. Well, I count on to get to those next places that are a lot easier for me to work with. So 172 plus 8 gives me 180. As I continue to count on, I start with whatever I end with in the previous portion. So for example, in this next problem, I'm doing 180 plus 20. I start with 180 because that's what I just ended with when I did 172 plus 8. 180 plus 20 gets me to 200. I'm trying to add or count on until I get to what I'm supposed to start with, which is 400 in this problem. So 200 plus 200 gives me 400. The really important piece of this is to then take all of the numbers that you've been adding together to count on. So these are the numbers that you use to count on. And now I need to add those numbers up. So 200 plus 20 plus 8 would give me my final answer of 228. You're going to do a couple of these in your notes as well. Go ahead and write down number 1, which is 86 plus 25. We'll start this one together, but you will end up solving both of these with your answers in your notes. So I start with 86 plus 25. For counting on, 